Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with Unreal Development. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through all the tools that you're going to need to push your first application to the Unreal device. We're going to be looking at a couple of tools that are going to also allow us to connect to the computer unit. We're going to be able to look at a few configuration options that we're going to need on the computer unit in order for us to be able to build to it, as well as a lot of different options that we're going to be needing in Unity. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so we have a lot to cover today. And the first thing that I want you to start doing is I want you to download this application, which is called SCRCPY. You can get it from github.com at this link. I'm going to be putting that in the description. It's also listed in the documentation for Unreal developers. So if you go to developer.unreal.ai, develop Unity Android Quick Start, or simply click on you know develop, it's going to take you to this documentation. Go to getting it started, and then it it'll tell you here that you need to you know you need to get it downloaded. So I'm just going to save you a couple of steps by telling you that you need that. Once you go into that link, you're going to download it either if you're running on Linux, you can do app install and then the application name. You can, if you're running on Windows, which is what I'm running on right now, you can just download the zip file and this is going to have the latest version. And then you can just basically place it anywhere you want. I think in my case, I ended up placing it in my documents in real and then I just extracted that folder into that same location. So the other things that this includes is going to include the adb.exe, also the SCRCPY, which we're going to need to connect to the actual operating system on the computer unit. And that's what this is going to give you. It's going to give you kind of like a bridge between your computer and the, co the computer unit that the Unreal is, is running on. The other thing that you can also do is you can do that for macOS. So you can use Brew in macOS to install it. And then to run it, we can just simply do that. And that's what I'm going to show you here. We can just run that command. It's going to launch. The, it's going to look like the simulator, but it actually it's the real device. It's, it's a real operating system running over TCP IP. So it's connecting to it. We have full access to it. And the first thing that I want you to do now that you have this downloaded is going to be you need to set up the Wi-Fi. That's the thing that I had to do. And if I didn't do that, the device wasn't working quite well because it had a really old version of the OS of the actual Unreal operating system. So what I ended up doing is I connected it to my Wi-Fi just like you would, you know, on any type of device. Once you get that going and you get the device connected, you will plug in your Unreal device and then you'll see a notification saying that there's a new version of Unreal available. I updated it and everything works beautifully. So the other thing that I also, that this documentation is also going to walk you through, let's go ahead and go back. You're going to need Unity 2018.2x or higher. In my case, I am using, let me go ahead and check that. I'm just using the latest, in, in, which is 2019.3.5 F1. I already run through these demos, so this is the version that I use, and I know that that version works really well. So make sure you get the latest so you get one that is compatible. Then the next thing is you can either download that here. I think this will download it. It'll actually take you to the download page. You can go all the way down and to me, this is not really user friendly. And the reason that I say that is because the, the features are cool, but I would add the links in here so we can just, you know, we don't, I couldn't find it until I went all the way down. And, oh, okay, that's where I, I can click on to download it. And that's not a criticism. That's just more of a, you know, for future changes, perhaps in real, here's that. And then the next thing that you can do is you can select which version you want. In my case, I have the computer unit and the latest OS required, so I'm just going to select that. I'm going to click on Agree, and then make sure that you have an account. If you haven't created an account, it's going to take you to an account page. In my case, I already have an account, so I can just click on Download. It's going to give me a Unity package, and that package is the one that we're going to be using for our application. So let's go ahead and go back here now that I have that downloaded, and make sure that I didn't, I didn't miss any settings. So we did this part, we have the right version of Unity. We downloaded the NR, which is the Unreal SDK. We have the Unity package. This step is one that I didn't want to do, and, I, and it turns out that I actually needed to do it. And the reason for that is because the one, the SDK that comes with Unity, doesn't have all the different APIs that you'll need, the different OSs that you'll need. So this one requires that you have API level 26 and, and above. 
And I thought Unity had it, but for some reason it wasn't working. So I ended up downloading the Android Studio. And you can just download it by clicking on that link. It's going to take you to this and you can just download it. And that's going to give you Android Studio and the SDK manager, which is the one that we're going to need to download a specific SDK. So I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute. Then the next thing is we need to create a project, right? And that's kind of what I did, but I want to walk you through that process just one more time because you weren't here when I was preparing for that. So <laughs> let's go ahead and click on new and then select 3D. And we're going to just do, we can just do NR demo hello MR. Doesn't matter what we call it. Click on create. That's going to be creating a new project. So the next thing that we do that we have to do after this is completed is we're going to have to also download a specific version of the API level. So let's go ahead and look at that while the project is getting created. So let's pretend that you already downloaded the Android Studio, which is true in my case. So you're going to go ahead and open it up. Let me go ahead and close it. You can just search for it. It's going to, you know, it's going to show you the Android Studio a splash screen. We're going to get this. We're not going to be creating anything in, in Android Studio. All we really need is going to configure SDK Manager. When you go to the SDK manager, there's a couple of things that we're going to need to keep track of. I'm going to keep track of this location. So we can just, you know, open a notepad. I'm just going to paste it in there because we're going to need that later. And then the other thing that I install personally, because I, I might test it in the future, is we need 26, either 26 or higher. So I ended up installing 26, 27, 28, and 29. And you don't really need all of them. You just need one that is above or equal to 26. So in my case, in your case, you might just do this one, or you can do this one, or you can do this one, or this one. So once you select it, you can just hit apply. It's going to walk you through the installation. And then once you're done, just make sure you close out of it. Also make sure that you close out of Unity, reopen Unity. And then once you do that, everything is going to, well, not everything is going to work fine, but I'm going to show you a couple of things that we need to do to make sure that it works fine. So. The first thing that we need to do once we have the project created, we're going to go into Edit, then go into Preferences. And this is something that I haven't done in the past, but in this case, I had to do it. Go into External Tools, and then we're going to go all the way down, and it's going to tell you here that you can use the, basically the pre-populated version of Unity SDK that Unity uses for the Android SDK, so you can just leave it. But in my case, I needed to use the specific versions of the SDK, which I downloaded through Android Studio, so you need to override it. So what I ended up doing is I went in here, and I just, you know, it happened to have the same setting that I already had before. So this is where you need to put that setting. I already had it because I did it previously. But in your case, you're going to see this. You're going to click on it. It's going to show you the same value, and you're just going to replace it. So that's going to be the first thing that you need to do. Once you get that going, the next thing that we're going to do is, you know, that we remember that we downloaded the Unity package. So we're going to go ahead and click on it so that we can decompress it, extract, extract it, and import it into Unity. This is going to be the Unreal SDK for Unity. I'm going to click on Import. It's going to import all the goodies and cool stuff that Unreal team you know, created so that it makes our life easier. So we'll just wait in there, and then we'll just have to make some other changes. So if we go back into the documentation, these are a couple more things that we need to do. There's going to be a lot of preparation, but hopefully once we go through this process once, we it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be make it, it's gonna be a lot easier in the future. Okay, so we have everything that we need there. So the next thing that I'm gonna do before we, and I'm probably going out of order, and that's because I already did it, but I think I'm gonna make it easier for you. So what I would do is go into the NR SDK. We're gonna go into the demo folder, and I'm gonna double click on the hello MR. Make sure you double click on that, and that's gonna be the scene that we're gonna be building to our development unit. I'm also going to make, make these gizmos a little small or perhaps a smaller. I think that's the correct way of saying it. And this is just a simple scene. It's going to allow you to place a couple of monsters. So if we go into the XR, I think it's on the plane detection, the mascot. It's basically going to be placing these cool characters on planes that get generated by the component that we have here, which is the plane detector. We're going to go through some of these components at a later time. I just want to make sure that you can build to your device right now, and then we can cover some of these individual components, such as the NR camera rig, the NR input, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is going to be what we need. Let's go ahead and go into build settings. 
make sure that we add it, we add this scene to the scenes to be built. So I'm going to click on add open scenes. I'm also going to go into Android and we need to change this to be Android. So I'm going to click on switch platform and that's going to take your PC build from being a PC Mac Linux build to an Android type build. So we just let, let that run for a minute and we're going to go back into the documentation and just look at a couple more settings that we're going to have to change. So we're going to have to change the scripting runtime. Looks like they're using that net for that X, which I, I am happy that they're doing that because there's a lot of cool, you know, language features that we would be missing if we weren't using that, the for that X equivalent. And then we did this part. So we should be good with creating the unit project. We should be good with, you know, our first example app because I already showed you how to add it and how to go to it. So the other thing is basically a lot of different settings that we need to that we need to change. And I think I remember them. So I'm just going to walk you through some of those. So let's go ahead and click on player settings. And the first thing that I'm going to have you do is go into quality. And if you look at where Android relies, Android is set to medium level quality by default. So we're going to make sure that we, we, che we check and we select the medium quality. And then if you go to medium quality, make sure that you change the setting on the vSync count to be don't sync. And don't ask me why. That's just a setting that they require. And I, I can't understand why they're doing that, but I can't really explain it right now. All I know is we need to change that setting. So the other setting, setting that we also need to do is we're going to go into the player. And there's going to be a lot of settings in here. So the company name, I'm just going to say is going to be Delmar Games in my case. Another, another one will be the NR demo. I'm just going to make the app name be NR demo. Hello, MR. We can just do that. I'm also going to be changing this. Make sure that you don't have the auto graphics API enabled. And also make sure that we're looking at Android, right? You don't want to change the settings on the other ones because this is only going to apply for Android because we're building for Android. We're going to be removing Vulkan. We're not going to be using that I, the graphics API. So I'm just going to click on the minus symbol and that's going to be just basically removing it. Just take a minute here. And then the next thing that we'll do is we'll just have to change the actual scripting runtime and also the API level. So if we go back into documentation, we have to, you know, this is what I'm doing right now. OpenGL ES3 is the one that we're going to be using for the graphics API. We're not going to be using the auto graphics API because, you know, this is the one explicitly that we need to use. We also need to change it to portrait mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Change the resolution. This is going to not be out of rotation. It's going to be portrait. So that's going to be taking care of resolution. It's going to be taking care of the graphics API settings. The other thing that we need to do here is we need to give this a friendly name. We're just going to do, this is going to be kind of like the bundle. ID on iOS. And I'm just going to say, it's going to paste the, the actual app name, which I have in here. We're going to paste it in the package name. Versions are fine. This one I'm going to be starting from Oreo, which is going to be API level 26. Because remember, that's the one that we selected for the Android Studio. If we go here and I go into SDK Manager, this is going to be one of the ones that we have available. We could have done 29, but in my case, I'm just going to do the lower. Let's go ahead and minimize that. And I'm also going to be doing the target API level with the same version, which is going to be 26. And that will take care of that. The, the other thing that we also need to do, make sure we change this to that net for that X. I think in the documentation that the Unreal team provided, they call it something else. And yeah, I think they're calling it a scripting runtime version. And right now it's called the API compatibility level. So make sure that you change that right setting. I think it's the same setting behind the hood. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we allow on safe code. In that setting, I always have a hard time finding it. So it's right here. And let me go ahead and go back and make sure that we have everything changed. We did a portrait. We didn't do graphics, auto graphics API. We also did the OpenGL ES3, which is the one that is, you know, is required. We also changed the bundle ID. We also set our API levels and also the target API level. This one is another one that is required. It's the right permission on, on the other setting is to be set to external SD card. So let's go ahead and change that. And that is going to be under the right permission. We're going to also write, add right permissions to the external SD card. And that makes sense because there's an SD card on the actual computer unit. 
And then we also did the unsafe code, and then we also went into quality settings and changed the vSync count to do no sync. So that's pretty much everything that we need to do there in order you know, for us to, to get it working. The next piece that we also need to do is we need to go into Unity and we need to build our project, right? So right now this doesn't really, it's, it's really not connected to the device. So one of the things that we need to do to connect to the device, we're gonna click here on refresh. And my Unreal device is currently connected to, to my computer. So I should be able to see it here. And you can actually see it here. If I go and pull the, the device here through the application that we just downloaded, you can see that, that those two IDs will match up. If I make it bigger, you can also see that that name should match that name. So that means that Unity is seeing that as a device that we can build to. So all we really need to do now is just go ahead and click on build and run. We're gonna tell it the location where we want to save it. You can see that I already have an APK because I already built that. So, but this one is gonna be called something different. It's gonna call it what we call the product name. So that is the product name, I'm gonna hit save. And then it's gonna tell you that SDK tools version needs to be updated. I'm just gonna click on update. It's actually gonna work, I did this previously. It's gonna to try to detect the SDK tools and it's going to push it to the device. So let's just give it a second here and then that should be everything that we need to do to get it going. So it looks like this is all done guys and it's actually copying the APA package to the device. So that's everything that you need to do to get this working. If you guys have additional questions, let me know. And what I'm gonna do in the meantime, I want to find out how I can do either a casting, a screen casting of the applications that I'm building to the device. So I can kind of show you the results because right now it's, you know, I can run it, but you can't see it. So I'm gonna be doing that in one of the future videos. Thank you guys.